Welcome to Fudge Muppet. My name is Scott, and I have to say that one of my greatest interests is mythology, or rather theology, depending on your religious persuasion or absence of such. And The Elder Scrolls is rich with it. Many gods with multiple cultural interpretations and various versions of a monomyth that all inform Tamriel's culture on how to think, how to behave, and what to aim for in life. Elder Scrolls lore is rich with myth and legend, but it's as rich as it is vast, and sometimes it's easy to lose track of things. So welcome our Gods Explained series, which will break down the dominant faiths of each of the races, as well as the various heresies and antecedents that may still linger among them. Do be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we have dropped a new video. And with that said, Welcome to the second of this series, The Bosma Gods Explained. The Bosma, the short, romantic, and some would say primitive elves of Valenwood. Their home is Tamriel's garden, an endless sea of green with a maze of foliage hiding cities nestled away, growing like blooms of a flower hidden amongst nature's wonder. This does not seem to be a place of civilization, and yet it is. It's home to the Bosma, with kings and clans and economies and the like, but different in ways shaped by their unique religion. In our previous episode, we discussed the Ultima and how they believe themselves to be the purest descendants of the Oldma, and they consider other elves to have strayed or fallen from the path of Oriel. Such is the case with the Bosma, which they claim had soiled time's line by taking mannish wives. Now, this is working with the assumption that the Bosma share the exact same lineage, Oriel's lineage, aka time's line. And this falls in line with the Ultima ideas of migration from Old Meris to Somerset, and the Oldma spread from Somerset to the rest of Tamriel, where they became the variations of Elves, Chimer, Aelids, Bosma, and so on. However, the mytho-histories of the Bosma tell of a different origin for their people, one that pertains to their manifestation from the primordial ooze. Firstly, there are some basic similarities with the elven Anuic tradition, the interplay of Anu and Padme, Lorcan betrayed Oriel, and the other spirits and so on. Definitely check out the Ultimate Gods video for further elaboration on that story, but without retreading similar ground, let's get into how the Bosma think about their race's origin in the ooze. Once there was nothing but formlessness. The land held no shape. The trees did not harden into timber and bark, and the elves themselves shifted from form to form. This formlessness was called the ooze. But Ifri took the ooze and ordered it. First, she told of the green, the forest and all the plant life in it. She gave the green the power to shape itself as it willed, for it was her first tale. The elves were Ifri's second tale. As Ifri spun the story, the elves took the form they have today. Ifri gave them the power to tell stories, but warns them against trying to shape themselves or the green. Shifting and the destruction of the forest were forbidden. Instead, Ifri commended the wood elves to the green so that they might ask the green to provide them with shelter and a safe passage, and as long as they respected the green, it would obey. This is called the Green Pact. Finally, Ifri told of all the beasts that crawl on the land or swim in the rivers or fly in the air. These Ifri gave to the wood elves as sustenance. They were to eat no plants but consume only meat. Ifri also told that no wood elf who was struck down by another wood elf should be allowed to sink into the ground, but should instead be consumed like the beasts. This is called the Meat Mandate. When the stories were told, Ifri saw they had a pleasing shape, but some of the ooze remained. Ifri told a final tale then and gave purpose to the ooze. Any wood elf that violated the green pact, either by shifting or by damaging the green, would be condemned to return to the formlessness of the ooze. Their names would be scrubbed from the story Ifri is telling and replaced with silence. The wood elves tell that those who are favored by the green have the power to release the condemned from the ooze, but where the condemned go and what form they take once they are released is unknown. No one has ever seen the ooze, or heard the souls trapped in it, or met one who can relieve the condemned of their punishment. But if you ask a wood elf if he thinks the ooze is just a tale, he will invariably reply, 
there is no such thing as just a tale. That was The Ooze, a fable, a children's tale from Valenwood that perfectly sums up Bosmeri belief. Ifri the singer, the storyteller, god of song and forest, the spirit of the now, is indisputably the most important deity of the Bosma, and I would argue even that most other deities that they worship are in fact imports from the Ultima of Somerset, though that is conjecture on my part. You see, the Bosma do not believe, like the Ultima and other elves, that they were cast from the mythical Aldmeris and have fallen from grace. Traditionally, the Bosma do not share such a glorification of the past. They do not believe themselves to be descendants of the gods, but rather shaped by them, specifically by Ifri, the storyteller. There is a big however here though. It is stated in the Varieties of Faith in Tamriel book that the Ultima and the Bosma believe themselves descended from Oriel. But this idea, to me at least, seems incongruent with the rest of Bosma core belief, but you could say that the notion of Bosmeri descendants from Oriel may be more popular now with the increasing Altmeri influence over the errors. Regardless, let's put aside that statement and talk of the unique Bosma perspective of their own creation. Ifri sung stories and shaped the Bosma from the primordial ooze, as he did so with the animals and nature of Nern. He was the first of the Elnafe and made himself the earth bones, that is the laws and principles of nature. But there is a rather crucial distinction here. Ifri is the shaper of the natural world, and he too shaped the Bosma, which fundamentally makes the Bosma part of nature. I feel as if it would be rare to see a Bosma who thinks of Mundus as a prison, rather the tendency seems to be to relish in the natural world and live alongside it in harmony. Amongst the Wood Elves, there does not seem to be the same melancholic view of mortality that many other Elves seem to share. But of course, faith is not as simple as this race believes X and this race believes Y. There is far more complexity to be found, and the Bosmeri Pantheon involves many familiar deities of the Ultima, as well as some strange others. But before we get into them, I do want to share a theory. I believe that the only true god of the Bosma is Ifri, and all the other gods that are now worshipped in Valenwood today are imported from the influence of other cultures. If you look to the modern Bosma pantheon, you'll find all kinds of external influence. For example, gods such as Oriel, Stendar, Xarxes, and Mara are clearly the exact same entities derived from the Ultimary pantheon, and the Bosma for much of their history have had political involvement and cultural exchange with Somerset, and then you have examples like Bandar, the bandit god, trickster god of thieves and beggars, a god known to have been borrowed from their neighbours the Khajiit. Then look at Zen, the Bosmeri god of payment in kind. There are studies that indicate such a god has origins in Akaviri and Argonian mythologies. According to the Ultima, the Bosma soiled time's line by taking mannish wives, and this could be literal, meaning they interbred the races of man. After all, the Bosma sheltered many needs who fled Aelid ruled Cyrodiil, but consider also the effect may be in a mythic sense, and that their pantheon became muddled with the gods of men. For example, Arke is worshipped by the Bosma, but his origins are found in the pantheons of men, same as the case for Herma Mora, which is a rather interesting conundrum. The Nords know of Hermaeus Mora as Herma Mora, the woodland man, a trickster spirit and hoarder of knowledge. But so do the Bosma on the other side of Tamriel. They too have cults devoted to Herma Mora, yet they do not acknowledge his Daedric heritage. My point by and large here is that the Bosma are a mythical tale-telling people, and they find appreciation in songs and stories, and even those of other cultures potentially, and that is why they have seemingly adopted and borrowed so many gods in their pantheon. Think also of how the Bosma have been exposed to many other cultures and variably welcoming, whether that be fleeing Needs, fleeing Aelids, Minotaurs, Imgur, Centaurs, Wood Orcs, all kinds of peoples have been welcomed into the wilds of Valenwood, and surely this has had an influence on their culture. They are seemingly an open-minded and welcoming people, with some glaring exceptions, 
But to sum it up, I think Ifri is the only true Bosmeri god, and that all others have been added to their mythology over the thousands of years since the dawn. Remember, this is just my theory, it's not an explicit canonized truth, but I sincerely believe it helps explain the Bosmer's outlook on mythology. After all, Ifri is the storyteller. He shaped the primordial ooze with tales and songs, which also lends itself to the fluid nature of Nern's metaphysical structure, lending itself to ideas such as myth makes reality. The Bosma literally believe they were a tale made solid by Ifri's words. The priests of the Bosma also further support ideas such as this. The spinners, they are called, and they are the priests of Ifri, but compared to the sermon droning acolytes found in other cultures, spinners to an outsider seem more like bards or historians, telling stories to all, speaking tales of past and stories of the future, weaving their divine providence into tales of prophecy that are told as if they were stories of the long past. Dogma is a word that somewhat seems antithetical to most of Bosma society. However, there are two great exceptions in the form of the Green Pact and the Meat Mandate. And even those have variable interpretations amongst the Bosma. The Green Pact strictly states that the green, aka the flora of Valenwood, shall not be harmed. No clearing for roads, no lumber mills, no crops, and so on. The Bosma instead use magic to shape the trees and plants into homes of their own. They rely on bone, leather, meat and insects and for the wood elves of Deep Valenwood, who refer to themselves as the Green Pact Bosma, they religiously adhere to the rules of the pact at a very fundamental level. Interestingly, they have actually been known to be more hospitable than most, no doubt due to their observation of the meat mandate, which means they must consume what they kill, even people. Whereas for many other Bosma, ritualistic cannibalism has fallen out of favor. Many include the consumption of mushrooms, honey and fruit, fallen fruit that is, and the seed must be replanted. As time has gone by, the old ways have faded and adherence to the Green Pact has become more flexible amongst mainstream society in Valenwood. There are many interesting facets of Bosma culture, but let us circle back to the religion itself. We already established that the Green Pact and the Meat Mandate are core religious tenets of the Bosma, with varying interpretations, and the Spinners are their priests, telling stories of past, present, and future. Well, there also do exist two spiritual leaders of the Bosma people that have been a part of an important tradition since the Dawn Era, the Green Lady and the Sylvanar. The Sylvanar walked with eyes open across Valenwood. His heart torn from its primal aspects was an empty pit. From the wild came a Bosma unlike any other. Her eyes were of fire, hair of wind and rain, and all who gazed upon her quaked in fear, all except the Sylvanar. Though she bared her fangs, he did not shy away. Though she sought to lose him in the underbrush, the vines parted for him to follow. She growled, filled with confused desires, wishing both to stay and to leave. In a bright clearing, she faced the Sylvanar and ripped at him with claws and teeth. Though he fended off her blows, still his blood soaked into the grass and the flowers wept. Her rage spent, the Green Lady finally stepped back and addressed the Sylvanar. Why do you follow me? You are not one of us. She spat upon the ground, her fist still clenched, stained with his blood. But I am of you, the Sylvanar said quietly. Come. Let me open your eyes to the green singing. Curious, the green lady came to the Sylvanar. Long did they stare unspeaking, until they warmed to union. The forest shuddered as spirit and body became one. With his touch, she saw the dance of frond and leaf, and learned the ways and wiles of Valenwood. His emptiness filled with her passion, and his nameless longing waned. Their union both tamed the wild, and invigorated the greenery. This is a tale forever told, the union of Sylvanar and the Green Lady. The spirituality and the physicality of the Bosma people manifest in two individuals who are bound by story to the protection of Valenwood and the Bosma. In ways, the two individuals mantle the identities of the Sylvanar and the Green Lady and perform the roles required of them. While they are not gods, I still thought it best that I at least mention them because they are one of the centerpieces of Bosmeri spirituality. 
But now let's actually get down to the details of the official pantheon as described in the book Varieties of Faith in Tamriel, and then we can get into some of the interesting cults and outliers that exist. Auriel, the time god of the elves, the king of the gods, is recognized and worshipped in Valenwood as it is today. Now, like I mentioned it before, perhaps Auriel's worship is an import from the Ultima of the Somerset Isles that has been incorporated into the Bosma Pantheon, or it could have been the case that they always recognized him as an important deity, but for the most part, they understand Auriel like the Ultima do, the being who stabilized time, the being who was tricked by the devil Lorcan and fought against his armies in the dawn. But a key difference here between Bosma traditional thought and Ultima traditional thought is how they originate. The Ultima believe they are descended from Auriel and the Aedra, whereas traditionally, the Bosma believe they were shaped along with the natural world by their far more important god Ifri. However, once again, I do want to mention that it does seem the traditional Bosma belief has been largely supplanted in the mainstream society and replaced with ultimary views of elven descendants from Auriel. I think it comes down to the mainstream views versus the traditional green pact Bosma views, but let's get on to Ifri. Ifri is often referred to as the spirit of the now, the present. To live in the moment is to embrace Ifri. If we were to look at the time orientation of the faiths, you could see the Ultima as past obsessed. They were betrayed. They fell from grace. Old Meris was lost. It's all about the past that they can no longer reach. Whereas the Bosma seem to be a very present people, a living in the moment, enjoying the now. If they had a favorite book, it would be The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And it is clear to see how this philosophy dictates their way of life and romantic view of the world. Ifri to them is the storyteller who quite literally sung them and all of nature into existence, and it's this important role that affects the rest of much of Bosma faith. For example, the spinners, their most important priests, are akin to bards and storytellers, telling tales of future, present, and past as if they were happening right now. And see even in the case of their spiritual leaders, the Green Lady and the Silver new individuals come to mantle or embody these ancient people and their stories in the present. On a side note, I do tend to firmly believe the Bosma about their own creation at the hands of Ifri, if only because there is real, tangible evidence to back it up, and that evidence is the Wild Hunt. Through the conditions of the Green Pact, the Bosma were able to escape the chaos of the primordial, ever-changing ooze and become a solid shape. This is why the Bosma are very opposed to changing their forms. However, in times of great need, the Bosma still possess the knowledge of the chaos and they are able to perform a collective ritual called the Wild Hunt, where they revert to their chaotic primal forms, a horde of feral, supernatural beasts, constantly changing and stampeding, slaying and devouring all in its path. Some are not even identifiable as beasts, but rather gaseous forms or great writhing tongues, unfettered by lips or teeth. There have been multiple wild hunts in history, and further evidence of this can be found in some Bosma who possess bestial features like horns, little remnants of their wildness. But yes, Ifri is by far the most important deity to the Bosma. If you know Ifri well, then it's fair to say that you understand the majority of Bosma belief. Now, also listed in the pantheon of the Bosma is Ark, which is the god of the life-death cycle. This is a god we hardly find in elven pantheons, and considering he is called the mortal's god, you can understand why. You know, the Ultima hating being mortal and all that. I earnestly believe that Ark was introduced to the Bosma in the earliest days of the Elysian Empire and subsequent exposure to other empires. These empires all worshipped the Imperial Divines in some capacity, and one of the eight divines is Ark. He is also the god of burials and funeral rites, but I don't know why the Bosma would need these. As per the meat mandate, their funeral rites are already determined, the cannibalism not wasting meat thing. But again, remember, Valenwood is one of the most open places to other inhabitants, orcs, centaurs, Imgur, and in the past, other elves and humans. So it's no wonder with their cultural attitudes that they've adopted some gods of man. Next, we have Xarxes, who, like in the Alt Mary Pantheon, is described as the scribe of Auriel and closely intertwined with Alt Mary belief. And as is the same case with Mara and Stendar, these three gods are similarly understood by the Bosma as they are by the Altma. 
which is why I believe they were just direct imports from Somerset. But let's get to some of the more interesting ones, such as Zen, the Bosmeri god of payment in kind, which includes both just remuneration and retribution. He is also a god of toil and agriculture, which remember for the Bosma would almost solely include husbandry for the production of meat and dairy. As I mentioned before, he is thought to have his origins in Akaviri and Argonian mythologies, and some have even compared him to the Imperial Zenithar, whose sphere covers similar themes as a god of work, but one of the most prevalent theories about Zen worship in Valenwood is the idea that the Kothringi, the silver-skinned folk of Blackmarsh who worshipped Zen as their chief deity, sailed to Valenwood and introduced the god prior to the Nahartan flu that almost entirely wiped them out. Another of their borrowed gods is Bandar, the bandit god, a trickster spirit of their neighbours, the Khajiit. We'll dive into him far more in the Khajiit episode, but for now just know that the Bosma worship him in differing degrees, and to them he is also seen as a god of archery. In the varieties of faith, there is also mention of Hermamora, which I touched on before, a malicious trickster spirit bearing the same name as the Nordic Hermamora, yet the Bosma do not recognize him as a Daedra. There is also mention of Joan and Jod, the old merry gods of the moons that act as the spirits of good and bad fortune. Of course, there is also recognition of Lorcan, the doom drum, the beating heart of Mundus, and the spirit who broke the elves' connection to Aetherius by trapping them in Mundus, but it is interesting to consider that at least the Green Pact Bosma do not seem to have the same disposition towards creation as the Ultima do, and instead relish in the shapes they have been given by Ifri. And so it's not entirely a stretch to say that perhaps the core of Bosmeri mythology is not an Anuic belief, but not convincingly Padmaic either, a sort of weird middle ground. But surely the Ultimary influence exerted over them for thousands of years has probably colored their culture with more Anuic philosophies. Perhaps then it would be more accurate to posit that broad mainstream Bosma of today are generally Anuic, more aligned with Ultimary belief, but the Green Pact Bosma fundamentally have a different, closer to Padmaic perspective. Anyways, off that tangent, let's talk about Hercene. Everyone loves the Daedric Prince Hercene, the Lord of the Hunt, and as you can imagine, to a society who heavily relies on hunted game as their food, such a god is likely to have increased relevance in their daily lives, hence why we have significant cults in his name. There is though a tension between Hercene and Ifri, which makes Hercene worshipping Bosma tend towards the heretical side of the mythological spectrum in Valenwood. Ifri is great opposed to shapeshifting outside of the ritually condoned wild hunt in times of great need, yet as a god of lycanthropes, Hercene is very fond of transformation and he has been known to sway Bosma from the Green Pact in this regard. Also in Khajiiti mythology there are additional stories that speak of the animosity between Hercene and Ifri, but again that is for another episode. Finally, I think people would roast me alive if I did not speak of the Wilder King. For whatever reason, there are some avid fans of this demigod-like being and we've spoken little of him in the past. So here we go. The Wilder King is a kind of living god worshipped by the tribal Bosma of the pristine jungles in the green shade region of Valenwood. Stories say he was once a powerful young boy from the Somerset Isles named Osteon, a tale best described in the passages of Sumerel's book. This is the story of a boy. This is the story of the land. This is the story of how the boy and the land came to be. The boy's name was Osteon. He had the power to shape the land. He whispered his instructions and the land willingly obeyed, but the boy was alone. Soon powerful people learned about the boy and how he could shape the land. They did not understand that what he had was a gift. They saw only the power in it. They wanted to conquer. They decided to test the boy. The powerful sent Osteon to Valenwood. They told him to shape Valenwood and build a great city there. They sent builders to help, but Valenwood was not like the land where Osteon grew up. Valenwood was wild and angry, and when the boy asked it to move, it said no. Osteon and Valenwood fought with each other. Osteon commanded the land again and again to move, and Valenwood refused again and again. In their struggle, they forgot everything else. Ostian forgot the builders who had been sent with him, and Valenwood forgot the peoples that lived in its midst. The boy in the land came to love the struggle, 
Both had been lonely and now neither was alone, but in the process the builders were injured and killed, even Sumerel, who had once been kind to the boy. And suddenly Ostian remembered who he was and what he had been sent to do, and he found Sumerel's body and asked the land to help him raise Sumerel from the dead. And for once, Valenwood listened, and Ostian and Valenwood became one. Together we are the Wilder King, Ostian and I. Sumeril is our first creation, our hollow man, whom we raised from the dead. This is the truth of our existence. The Wilder King is the divine mingling of the Ultima Ostion and Valenwood itself. Some would interpret Ifri. In the events of the Elder Scrolls Online, the Wilder King became the Wilder Queen when an Ultima woman named Aranias, who was born with the power to control the Earth, essentially mantled the God, and so she became the Wilder Queen. But long story short, it's kind of a living god. A mingling of the metaphysical principle of the green, you know, also known as Valenwood, and a physical person. Like I've said throughout the video, it seems that Bosmeri mythology is quite elusive and fluid with only one solid foundation piece being Ifri and the Green Pact. Arguably, the influence of Ultima, Need, Aelid, and all manner of other cultures and religions has played a part in the creation of the modern Bosmeri faith. One could say that the Bosma deeply understands the mythopoeic nature of Mundus, an understanding given to them in their very birth, as they were shaped by the songs of Ifri at the dawn, a myth that made reality. Bosmeri spinners continue to tell the stories of the past, present, and future, interpreting the ever-fluid mythos of the Elder Scrolls. There are another race of Tamriel, in fact, that relish in the song-making and poetic tales, a people who shape the very physical structures of Nern with their very tongues. I am, of course, talking about the Nords. In the next episode of the Gods Explained series, we will be tackling them and providing the Patamaic antithesis of traditional elven belief. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is for next time. Thanks so much for watching. As always, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Subscribe for more, like the video if you enjoyed, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.